Imagine you're part of a small gathering, maybe in a private garden. You lounge on a silk-covered couch, drinking aromatic coffee. As you enjoy the night air, you get a glimpse of the instrument you are hearing. Its visual beauty is precise and delicate as the sounds emanating from it. Aimee Froome, the museum's curator of art of the Islamic worlds, told me more about this captivating instrument. We are looking at an Ottoman Turkish lute, or oud. It's a pear-shaped instrument, and the white that you see is beautiful mother of pearl decorating it. It was made in the late 19th, early 20th century by the most famous Ottoman lute maker, and his name was Manolis Venios, also known as Manol. When I first look at it, I'm struck by its physicality, its objectness, its craftsmanship. And so this would have been a highly refined skill to make an instrument like this. Yes. And would the same person have done the mother of pearl work and all the other ornate qualities? It's all done in one shop? This is a very good point. Yes, in this case it would be, but usually in Ottoman workshops, whether they be for instruments or for art, you often have specialization. In this case, Menel was a master lute maker, so he probably had assistants working with him, but his hand would be the final one to touch the instrument. This lute's maker was working in Istanbul, I spoke with another expert to learn more. My name is Mehmet Ali Sanlukol, and I'm a professor at the New England Conservatory. I'm also a composer and active performer. The music you hear throughout the segment is by Mehmet. Manol was a Greek Orthodox Ottoman citizen. That's important because at the time, Istanbul was home to a good number of non-Muslim people. So Istanbul was a very cosmopolitan city. It still is today. I mean, I often refer to Istanbul as the New York of the Near and the Middle East. There is no city as dynamic as Istanbul. So even though there were frictions between peoples back then, still the culture, the cosmopolitan culture of Istanbul at the end of 19th and at the beginning of 20th centuries very much championed a non-Muslim instrument maker like Manon. <laughs> 